push that rock here with some, some math. Let's do uh, some direct comparison tests. Let's use it. Now, to use the direct comparison test, you're going to compare two integrals, one of which you know something about. So I'm first going to look at this improper integral with unbounded domain. Let's graph it. If I put in 1, e to the negative x, same thing as 1 over e to the x. If I put in 1 into this function, I get 1 over e. That's about, what, 0.35. So this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, so about right there. If I put in 2, I get 1 over e squared. That's going to be what? Uh, e squared is a little bigger than 7. Not quite as big as 9. So we're uh, bigger than 1 ninth, but smaller than 1 seventh, so about right here. And it's just going to keep dropping. And it's continuous function exponentials are continuous. So we're talking about this area here. And we want to know, does it, it goes out forever, infinite. Do we want to know, does it converge or diverge? So I've set up the limit where the upper uh, limit of integration is a dummy variable. And we want to know the limit is that dummy variable goes infinity. So that allows us to integrate this and we get e to the negative x with a negative out front using the crawdad hole and we're going from 1 to m and so then we have negative e to the negative m minus a negative e to the negative 1 and remember all this time there's a limit out here we're taking the limit <clears throat> so let's see this double negative becomes a plus and it's just 1 over e so we have a number there so we're going to have the limit of that number 1 over e okay as m goes to infinity well that's just the number okay and then we're going to have this limit as m goes to infinity of, let's see, negative 1 over e to the m because this negative exponent drops it down here. Okay? <clears throat> and I just busted up the limit across this plus sign. Now, this is where we're interested. I'll kick this negative out. And we're looking at this limit here. It's trying to decide if it exists or doesn't exist. Well, it's clear. I mean, we're looking at the graph right here. This is 1 over e to the x, but just replace change the x axis to an m axis and it's the same function it's clearly going to zero as the input goes to infinity the graph is dropping down to zero so this is zero so it goes away and so we're left with one over e so yes this converges so it converges and we even know it converges to one over e that's nice to know now so using that information i don't got to walk through all that again if i'm trying to do this one what I need to do is compare it to this one I've already I've already looked at this area. Let's graph this function, which will be, uh, let's see, make sure I stay in the screen here, uh, the y equals 1 over e to the 2x. Well, if you put in 1 now, you get an e squared, so we're already at this second point. And then when you put in square, you e the 4, so it drops down dramatically. So, see, we can show, we can see that this area is smaller than the black area. We already know the black area converges from the previous work, so we think this converges, but we have to, we have to prove it. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say, look, this is always true for all x. That's always true, all right? E to the negative x is one over e to the x. Now, what if I square this side? Square this side, but not that side. What does that do to this equal mark? It won't be an equal mark anymore. Well, uh, when for all x that are greater than 1, <clears throat> greater than or equal to 1, this is a proper fraction, right? 1 over e is a proper fraction where the denominator is larger. And 1 over e to the square is proper fraction where the denominator is uh, smaller. So, and when you square fractions, like 1 half, if you square it, it gets smaller. You know, even if it's a pretty big fraction. If it's a proper fraction and you square it, it gets smaller, okay? So 0.9 is definitely smaller than 0.81, okay? I mean, bigger than 0.81. So when you square it, it gets smaller. So that means that this side over here, since this side's getting smaller, this side is now bigger than or equal to this side for all x greater than or equal to 1. Now we know that this is the same thing as e to the negative x squared, which is the same thing as multiply the exponents. So we get e to the negative 2x. So we have just established that for all x over the relevant domain, this function is bigger than that function. And we already know that this integral right here converges. Therefore, that means that integral up there, e to the negative 2x dx, 
converges by direct comparison test. Math made simple. Simpson math.